Hi, welcome to Algebra 2 Common Core. Today in lesson number four, we're going to examine how we can predict what kinds of roots or solutions a quadratic equation will have. So let's begin with exercise number one, where we want to solve the equation x squared minus 4x equals negative 10 using the quadratic formula. So I'm going to first of all put this in standard form. So I've got x squared minus 4x. Let's add the 10 to the left side of the equation, so plus 10 equals 0. Now, from this equation, obviously, a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 4, and c is equal to 10. So using the quadratic formula, I'm going to have x is equal to the negative of negative 4, which is positive 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 4 squared, minus 4 times 1 times 10, all over 2 times 1. Now, you can either use your calculator, or this one's pretty easy to do underneath the radical. I'm going to end up with 4 plus or minus 16 minus 40, which is, of course, negative 24 all over 2. So I see that I have a negative number underneath my radical, so that tells me that my roots are going to have an i in them. So I'm going to get 4 plus or minus. Now 24 can be broken down into 4 times 6. So the square root of 4 is 2. Because I have a negative, I'm going to say 2i. And then 6 is still left underneath the radical sign, all over 2. Now remember that when we look at all three of those outside numbers, if they can all be divided by the same thing, then I go ahead and do that. So dividing everything by 2, I'm getting my answer, 2 plus or minus i radical 6. Now I see, of course, that these solutions are complex. They have the imaginary i in it. And in fact, these would be complex conjugate solutions. Now the next part of the question says, what made the solution to example number one be an imaginary with an i or complex because I'm adding a real part and an imaginary part? So clearly what told us that we were going to have imaginary or complex was this number underneath the radical sign. That number underneath the radical sign has a special name. It's called the discriminant. The discriminant is going to be very useful to us today in order to determine what we call the nature of the roots or what type of roots we have for a quadratic equation. So what is the discriminant? When I take a look at my quadratic formula, x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, it's the part that comes underneath the radical sign. So this part right here is going to be my discriminant b squared minus 4 times a times c. That quantity is going to give us some really important information about what kind of roots each quadratic equation has. So in this case, it told us because the b squared minus 4ac was a negative number, it told us that we were going to have complex conjugate roots and that there would be two of them because they're conjugates of each other. Now in exercise number two, we're going to determine the value of that discriminant and then from the discriminant, describe what kind of roots and how many roots our quadratic equation would have. So in our first example, x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0. We know that a is equal to 1 because that's the coefficient of x squared. b is equal to negative 3 because that's the coefficient of x and c is equal to negative 10. So, looking at just the discriminant, 
the b squared minus 4ac part of this. b squared gives me negative 3 squared, which is 9, minus 4 times 1 times negative 10. So I see that this discriminant is equal to 49. Now, that's going to be important because I describe this discriminant as a perfect square that happens to be a positive value for my discriminant. Now, what does this perfect square positive discriminant tell me? Let's try to find the roots and see if then we can describe what kind of roots we have. So, to solve, let's go back to our quadratic formula. So, x is equal to the negative of b, so positive 3, plus or minus the square root. Well, we just calculated that square root. That's going to be the square root of 49 all over 2 times 1, which is 2. So I am getting actually two different answers, 3 plus 7 divided by 2 and 3 minus 7 divided by 2. 3 plus 7 divided by 2 is giving me a solution of 5. 3 minus 7 is negative 4. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. So here are the solutions or the roots. What do we see about these roots? They are real numbers. They are not imaginary because they don't have eyes in them. They are rational numbers because they can each be written as a fraction. And lastly, they are unequal. They are not equal to each other. I have two distinct solutions. To show a little graph of this one, I'm going to make a grid. I have found my roots to be 5 and negative 2. So when I draw this going through that point and that point, also I notice that my y-intercept should be equal to negative 10. So on my graph, I would have to go way down to negative 10 to get that y-intercept. So my graph is going to look something like this. And I see that I have two distinct roots, two distinct places where this graph crosses the x-axis. So that's why I have two roots. Let's try b. For b, I'm going to put this in standard form first of all. So I've got 4x squared minus 12x plus 9 equals 0. So the b squared minus 4ac is just going to equal negative 12 squared minus 4 times 4 times 9. So go ahead and calculate that. You can use your calculator if you would like. But I see that the b squared minus 4ac turns out to be an answer of 0. Now, what is that going to tell us when I have an answer for the discriminant of 0? Let's put it in our quadratic formula. So x is equal to 12 plus or minus the square root of 0, which is 0, all over 2 times a, 2 times 4, 8. So that really gives me two solutions. 12 plus 0 divided by 8. 12 minus 0 divided by 8. Oh, this is interesting. So really I'm getting a solution of 3 halves for both of them. So I really only have one solution. To make a little sketch here, what would this look like on my graph? I would have a point where the graph touches the x-axis at 1.5. So my graph for this one looks like this. 
And this is called tangent to the curve because I only have one spot where the curve touches the x-axis. So the curve is tangent to the x-axis. To describe our roots, we're going to say in this case that our roots are real again because I don't have any i's in my answer. They are rational. I only have one root, and that one root is a fraction, so it is rational. And these roots are actually equal to each other because there were two roots, but they matched. And again, the word for that, this graph is tangent to the x-axis. For example three, let's examine some more possibilities for discriminants. So, so far, our first example had a negative discriminant. A negative discriminant told me that my roots were going to be complex. For example number 2a, we ended up with a discriminant that was a positive perfect square. When my discriminant was a positive perfect square, that told me that my roots were going to be real, rational, and unequal. There would be two distinct roots. And for 2b, I ended up with a discriminant that was equal to zero. When I have a discriminant equal to zero, that tells me that I actually only have one root. And that root is real and rational. So let's go on to number 3a. Let's put it in standard form. So 3x squared minus 8x minus 3 equals zero. So solving, let's go ahead and find that discriminant first. So b squared minus 4 times a times c. That would be equal to negative 8 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 3. So the discriminant is going to be 64 plus 36, giving me an answer of 100 for the discriminant. So again, that's going to be helpful information for us. Now, let's use that discriminant to then solve our equation. So x is equal to the negative of b, 8, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That's the square root of 100. All over 2 times a, so 2 times 3 is going to give me the 6. Solving this, I've got x is equal to 8 plus or minus 10, all over 6. Here are my two solutions. 8 plus 10 divided by 6, that's just equal to 3. 8 minus 10 divided by 6, that's going to be negative 2 sixths, or negative 1 third, for those two solutions. Now let's describe this. When the discriminant is a positive perfect square, then my roots are going to be real. That makes sense. I ended up with two real roots. They don't have imaginary in them. They're going to be rational. Rational means that all of my answers can be written as fractions. And the last thing is that I notice in 3a that there are two roots, so these two roots are going to be unequal to each other. Now let's go ahead and do part B together. So it's already in standard form, so I'm going to do the discriminant first. B squared minus 4 times A times C. That's going to be negative 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 2. Now when I calculus, calculate this, I'm getting b squared minus 4ac is equal to 28. I recognize that 28 is a positive answer for the discriminant, but it's not a perfect square. So that means that this is going to tell us completely different information when I've got a positive but not a perfect square um, discriminant. Let's solve. So I'm going to say x is equal to the negative of 6, which is positive 6, 
plus or minus the square root of 28 all over 2 times a. So when I reduce the 28, that's going to be 2 times 2 times 7. So there's a pair of 2's that can come out. So 6 plus or minus 2 radical 7 all over 2. So for x, we're getting, let's divide everything by 2, so it's 3 plus or minus radical 7 all over 1, but we don't have to put that 1, of course. So when I ended up with a discriminant that was positive but not a perfect square, what I'm going to see is that my solutions are going to be real. I don't have any imaginary because I see that I've got a positive number underneath the radical sign. Not only are they going to be real, they're going to be irrational. I see in my solution that I've got the square root of 7, and when I add or subtract the square root of 7, that's going to give me irrational roots. And then I see that I have two roots, but they are unequal to each other. If you have any questions about the material that we talked about today, including the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, please be sure to see me in the morning or send me an email and I can answer you there as long as I have my computer at home. Have a great night and we'll see you next time in class when we're going to do a lot of practicing with the discriminant.